Hello, I'm Audrey Tang, Taiwan's Digital Minister in charge of youth engagement. I'm really happy to be here virtually to share some thoughts around youth, education, and media. My main idea is very simple. The digital natives, the young people, should be our teachers. They should be media producers. They are already media producers. And we, the digital immigrants, should learn from the younger people. In Taiwan, starting last year, we already have this idea of media competence. It replaced the old curriculum talking about media literacy in our schools. Because when you talk about literacy, it's about the older people making media for the younger people to consume. But if we talk about competence, well, that's the younger people who all have access to the digital media production tools, who have Broadband as a human right, because in Taiwan, anywhere, including on Yushan, almost 4,000 meters high, you're guaranteed to have 10 megabits per second at just 15 US dollars per month. Unlimited, otherwise it's my fault. And in this configuration, we rely on the younger people's understanding of the framing effect, of the fact-checking, of the solidarity among the news workers and the data scientists to make sure that they can reveal the actual situation of the society. We rely on the younger people to push out the narratives about the air pollution measurement that they did as an airbox distributed ledger. We rely on the younger people to start initiatives who mobilize the entire society to ban plastic straws and other single-use utensils when it comes to our national identity drink, the bubble tea. And we also relied on the younger people to tell us that we're not to go um, use the 4G uh, infrastructure back in 2014, when young people occupied the parliament and told us that there's no pure play private sectors from the PRC, that's People's uh, Republic of China regime, so that we ban the use of the PRC components from our 4G infrastructures thanks to hundreds of thousands of young people making that case very publicly in a demonstration. And so what follows um, is how young people have contributed to our counter pandemic effort so that we succeeded with no lockdowns and also how through their media work we can counter the infodemic with no takedowns. First of all, the collective intelligence system is very important to enable a fast and timely response to the pandemic. It was a young doctor uh, who went by this name, No More Pipe, in the PTT, the Taiwanese equivalent of Reddit, a not-for-profit social sector forum um, maintained by National Taiwan University students, where the No More Pipe noticed that there was this Wuhan whistleblower uh, with the name Li Wenliang, and who said there's seven SARS cases in the Huanan seafood market. And so not only did she repost this whistleblowing around uh, the last day of 2019, but also with her expertise, working with many other young people who upvoted this whistleblowing to find out the veracity of the claim. So it immediately um, gave this notice to the medical officers in the Taiwan Center for uh, Disease Control. Uh, and we not only sent an email to WHO, but started health inspections for all passengers flying in from Wuhan to Taiwan the very next day, the first day of 2020. So this shows that with our absolute freedom of speech, according to the Civicus Monitor, Taiwan is the only country in the whole of Asia that has a completely open society in terms of the speech freedoms. Um, can the government trust the citizens to come up with useful collective intelligence? And the citizens can trust each other to come up with innovations. And sometimes the young people are very young people. There was a young boy in the primary school back in April that called this hotline of the Central Epidemic Command Center, the CECC, 1922, saying, oh, you're rationing out masks, and all I get is pink medical mask. When I wear it to school, my classmates may laugh at me. Well, the very next day, the CECC, all the medical officers wore pink medical mask, and at the suggestion of the participation officers, another young person, uh, the minister Chen, even said a pink panther 
was his childhood idol. So suddenly, the young boy became the most hip boy in his class, for only he has the color that the heroes wear. Another part is about fairness. In, when we ration out the masks, a lot of civic technologists, most of them really young, in the Gov Zero initiative, forked the government, making sure that for our government services, which ends in GOVTW, has a young people's reimagination at G0V, that TW. So it's those G0V civic technologists that came up with this idea to visualize the mask availability in real time in the crowdsourced maps so that people queuing in line can, for example, um, when we're ratio now, nowadays is every two weeks for adults is nine medical masks and for children, that's 10. So when children queue in line and swipe their national health insurance card, people queuing after them can see immediately that the number goes down by 10 or if they're an adult, then it goes down by nine. And this kind of participatory accountability extends not only to people who can see the maps, but also people with visual impairments and so on through voice assistance, chatbots, and other technologies, more than 100 of which. And this also enables us to analyze the distribution strategy and for young people to say, hey, some of us work very long hours, so by the time we go off work, well, the pharmacists have all closed. And so this enables us to then revise the system working with the convenience stores so people can pick up the medical mask rations every other week through the convenience store 24 hours a day. In addition to fast and fair, the fun part is also very important because conspiracy theories and so on can threaten to divide the society when the time of pandemic comes. That's called the infodemic. And so there's, again, a very young team working with the premier who noticed that there's a panic buying conspiracy theory that says the tissue papers are being confiscated to make medical masks. That's of course not true. But they roll out this meme just a couple hours after the rumor spreads. It's our premier wiggling his button a little bit, saying that in very large fonts that each of us only have one pair of bottoms. Uh, it's a web play because in Mandarin, to twin stockpile sounds the same as twin bottoms. So it went viral. Uh, and people understood then from this table that tissue paper are made out of South American materials, while the medical masks are made out of domestic material. So the panic buying died down in just a couple of days. So my call to action to you is to think how to make the epidemiologic knowledge, the physical distancing, wearing a mask to protect oneself from one's own unwashed hands, and so on, like this cute spokesdog of CECC, to make sure that everybody understands the science of public health. Just like a bunch of young YouTubers uh, crowdsourced and crowdfunded, Taiwan can help that us. You can take a look at it, get inspired by it, and then spread the knowledge so that everyone understands how to reduce the R value of the novel coronavirus so that we can thrive and survive um, together in the time of pandemic and digital technologies. So that's my uh, presentation. And please feel free to share more of your ideas. I look forward to learn about all your ideas in this forum. And it's use ideal, that's your idea. Live long and prosper.